to Instant Ramen. Of course, you know my voice, I'm OSG, and today joining me in this little Instant Ramen singing as, as we learn about the Tampa Bay Rowdies in the, in the U.S. Open Cup, I've got Dynamic Foxtrot here with me today. What's going on, brother? All good, OSG. All good. And today, like I said, we're play, we're playing the Tampa Bay Rowdies in the U.S. Open Cup coming up on Wednesday at Tampa Bay. So we invited a friend and a guest to come in. He's from RBLR Rowdies. His name's James. How you doing, brother? Introduce yourself. Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm James Knowles, and I do, like you said, the Rowdy Show for RBLR Sports down here in Tampa. Uh, we cover the uh, we cover the Rowdies, of course. We cover the Rays and the Lightning and the Bucks, and I do the soccer podcast. So, um, yeah, we like to try to make sure that everyone in Tampa Bay has a little bit of coverage for whatever sport they follow, unless it's a, I, I guess it's uh, unless it's a little more obscure than that. <laughs> nice. No, yeah, I do. I do uh, appreciate the Rowdies, especially the, the long history and and sports wise, when it comes to Tampa, like. They're pretty good at all, almost all the sports right now, especially the the Rays. Like I'm, I'm a big Astros fan, and the Rays scare me now. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't follow as much, you know, the Rays, Lightning, and Bucks. You know, if you want to compare it to the Rowdies, because that is the team that I literally do the the show for. But um, I have certainly been following. Obviously, the Lightning in the playoffs, and right now the Rays are uh, what started what 12, 13 and 0, something like that. Or uh, may, maybe I have my numbers wrong, but it was it was something ridiculous, and uh, I was I was just shocked to hear about it because um, I mean the Rays are usually a good team, but I don't know if they've ever been that that good. So it's pretty cool, good times. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun when you have a lot to lot to cover and if you're following those teams it's always fun just give me a little coverage so all right let's man we'll just jump into it and we'll just kind of hit you up with some questions about the team because we'd like to get to know y'all before we head up uh, to tampa bay not us specifically but the uh, you know the dynamo coming into tampa bay for the u.s open cup i guess this is i don't know considered first round or what round of a round they call it but uh, should be interesting, should be fun, especially since we were given the, the weekend off after y'all's game where LA AFC moved their game out. I guess they have a Champions League game or something to replace ours with. So we got moved out, we get a bye. So that means we could uh, bring a, a nice lineup and a nice first team. But tell us about Tampa Bay. How are they doing this season? Yeah, well, uh, so Tampa Bay Rowdies are generally supposed to be one of the better teams in the league. We are frequently playoff contenders and if we're not playoff contenders that's because we are like contending for the top of the league overall in 2020 we set a points record and that was you know obviously during covid and everything so it was kind of it was i think doubly impressive there but uh 2020 that unfortunately the uh final was canceled because of covid so we just had an eastern conference champion and a western conference champion then in 2021 we made it to the uh final of the of the whole season again and then we lost in the final unfortunately uh 2022 we made it to the eastern conference final and then we lost there and then so far this year this has actually been the hardest that we have uh or you know the hardest that we've started in a long time it's been a a, a you know a, a really poor start for this team especially because at the moment we're not in the playoff spot and the game that we are playing right now, we are still down one nil. So <laughs> without even a point in this game, we will stay out of the playoff spots, obviously. And it's only six, seven games in whatever we are. But yeah, it's obviously not anything that we would like at this point. It's something that I think Rowdy's fans are kind of shocked by, myself included. We were, you know, going into this season expecting that we were going to be, this was the year that we kind of, you know, we wanted to go and do it because we've obviously got to, uh, like I said, the final and we didn't get to play the final. We got to the final and we lost it. We got to the Eastern Conference final and we lost it. So this was supposed to be the year because the team that we brought in was a lot of players from around the league to replace outgoing players. But these guys were, you know, the top of their teams uh, in a lot of cases. And we brought in one or two players from years past who had helped us out. So, you know, we're supposedly building this super roster, so to speak, in the USL championship. And then lo and behold, it takes a lot more than just building the roster to put it all together. And unfortunately, our only win on the season 
was against another struggling team from uh, South Florida, Miami. And then, you know, we were obviously able to win our first game in the Open Cup that put us into this game on Wednesday versus Houston. So it is not ideal. And um, as much as I would like to say, you know, it's down to this or it's down to that, there have been a couple of different factors all over the place that have impacted us negatively. And all of that combines to leave us in this uh, very precarious position at the moment. So would you... would you- you were mentioning the team. There was some turnover between last year's roster to this year's roster, and you brought in some nice pieces that look good on paper. Is it just the cohesion not coming together for the team on the pitch? Is it is it is it the coaching style? Because I mean that's a question here sometimes. But uh, what, what's what do y'all feeling the different? Are they is there a lot of potential? We may be uh, playing with the sharks here when we go into Tampa Bay and getting something we're not expecting. Well, I mean, on my end, I, I would hope for that. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think it's necessarily down to the coaching style because this is the same coach that we've had for five, six years at this point. So he's been around for a little while, obviously. He's kind of built up a, a good base. And uh, last year, I think what it really came down to is there was a, you know, you have to have a proper succession for players when they're aging at a certain point because, you know, you get to be 30, 31 years old. And as much as I'm, I'm 31 and I'm like, you know, I'm young, this is fine. Whatever. If you're a soccer player, that's kind of, you know, you're getting to where you're over the hills. So you have to put in that succession plan. And if you're Chelsea, if you're Bayern Munich, you can go and you can make a list of the players that you want and you can just say, all right, well, that player is not affordable. We'll move to the next player. Uh, Tampa Bay at the USL championship level, you know, we can't necessarily make a list and just check off our way down through it. And until we find somebody who fits exactly the role we want, we have to go and get somebody who's going to play um, good enough, you know, in the role that we expect, obviously, but they're going to have to also probably not necessarily be the same type of player. So I think that um, unfortunately with the turnover that we've had in the off season. So one player that we lost was the longtime captain, Sebastian Guanzotti. Um, he was a player who had made over a hundred appearances and he is actually now our leading goal scorer like ever for um, the rowdies in the modern era and back in, in the seventies uh, and eighties. So, you know, he's obviously got club legend status here and uh, he was unable to you know, probably continue to play at the level that we had, especially like in 2021, he was absolutely on fire. And then 2022, it dipped a, le- a level. So, you know, you want to go, okay, when when do you need to kind of say, hey, we appreciate everything you've done. Uh, let's show you the door, though, because we have to go and we have to live up to the standards that this club is known for. And maybe you're not up to those standards at this point. So unfortunately, that happened in the off season of 2022. I think that fans would have probably expected maybe a little bit more fanfare to it, um, you know, expectations that we know when we can go in and say, hey, this is your last game. Thank you so much, X, Y, Z. But uh, none of that came, unfortunately. So we had to move on to the next guy. And that guy has come in. He's, you know, a proven commodity in this league in terms of his ability to score. But he obviously plays the game in a different way. And uh, if you have to kind of build your team around suiting his needs so that he can get into the positions where he can usually score, then that just takes a different kind of setup. And I'm not sure that everybody is quite on board with that, not in the sense of like a, an attitude way or anything like that, but it's just simply, yeah, there, there's a, a less cohesion and you can see it in the first couple of games that we played. It's certainly gotten better since then, but the first couple of games we played, we weren't even sharp as a team in all honesty. I would say that, you know, we had a lot of misplayed passes. We honestly had a lot of bad touches. There were players just not being where they needed to be. And you can work on, you know, you can work on preparing yourself for each individual game as much as possible. And I'm certain they are. But if it's a team that isn't used to playing with all of the pieces that are around them, then they're not probably going to be able to put it together just as well as they would have before. And so, yeah, I, I, I at this point, I guess I'm going to have to chalk it up to cohesion. But um, there are it's 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 definitely more than just that. But that is that is probably the biggest factor going into where we've had our issues this year. And so far, you know, we haven't even been good necessarily at home, let alone away. It's uh, it's just leading to a, a negative situation and probably one of the more negatives the fan base has been in a little while. But that's just, you know, in terms of our outlook, not necessarily our attitude. I think that we're always going to be a team that the fans show up for and we want to try and carry them forward and not, you know, beat them down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things I want to mention is just 
um, just going back to the last roughly uh, 10 or so years, I would definitely like to, to acknowledge the fact that the slow growth of the USL, well, because it, it was called the USL before, but then it became USL Championship. Well, USL Pro, USL, USL Championship. And just during that span of time, just the, how that league and it seems essentially like slowly raised the bar in, in the sense of like uh, the level of play that has to be there in the first place. Like it's, it's starting to notice and for teams like the Tampa Bay Rowdies, especially when I was uh, pretty close to uh, watching the USL when the Toros were affiliated with the Dynamo, uh, the, ta- right. the Rowdies were, were amazing and they still are. I think they still are. Uh, they're having like a bad slump right now. And, and uh, yeah, I just, just going back to um, the level of the league, like, just and the share amount of teams that are in it at this point, I, I feel like it's like just having that, um, those teams um, being involved in the league consistently and just making those changes around, um, or like at least having that competition, especially when it, when it comes to the rowdies and the other big teams, it definitely sets the standard as to where to be, and and it's just unfortunate that the rowdies are where they are at right now to start the season, but I feel like that uh, they they can find their footing at some point and. They can make things happen. So it's it's still on the season. There's still like thirty games to go, but for sure. But but yeah, it's it's just one of those slow starts. Uh, even when you bring in the 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 players that you have on paper that you want to bring in, that it's not working right now. But I feel like it's gonna uh, things are gonna start working at some point. Yeah, I think that you know, like I said earlier, we were looking forward to this season in that we had built what we thought was a very good roster. So just as a quick example, one player, uh, Forrest Lasso, is the uh, three-time USL Defender of the Year, like the individual Defender of the Year. He was with us for 2020 and 2021. Uh, He was the USL Defender of the Year for both of those years. And then because he did so well, he moved to the first division in Sweden. And, you know, fair enough. I understand that you would probably want to take another crack at the top division somewhere. He got it. The team that he was with was unfortunately not that great. And so they ended up getting relegated. So over the offseason, he comes back to the Rowdies. And, you know, all of the fans are looking forward to this. Forrest Lasso, he's this great player. He's done so well for us individually. Like, we already know what he can do for this team. But then, um, you know, he's been responsible, I think, for at least two penalties in the first two or three games that we conceded and then ultimately had scored against us. And at the moment, he wasn't starting at least the last game before tonight. I think he's out tonight with a personal. Um, I think like it's a it's a family thing. I think his wife is pregnant. But um, he, unfortunately, was uh, not even starting the last game. So, you know, you kind of wonder. There's a player who's obviously this talented. He's got it in him but it's just not clicking for him for whatever reason. And I don't know exactly what the reason is. Maybe, you know, it just comes back to getting used to this setting after a year abroad in Sweden. I know obviously those are very different climates. Maybe, maybe it takes a little bit more than that, but yeah, um, that is, that is honestly the quintessential example right now of a player that we expected somebody to come in and from day one, just hit the ground running. We're going to be, you know, pushing for the top of the table. And then unfortunately it's kind of been the opposite case. And we kind of have to get him back onto the spl- onto the space where we uh, expect him to be. And I know that he will at some point. Like, I definitely have faith in that. But like I said, we're just not there yet. So look, looking at y'all, it's kind of uh, <clears throat> trying to figure out which, how y'all play. To describe the – I know this is going to be different. You're playing the Houston Dynamo in a do-or-die game at, at home in front of – uh, however many uh, fans y'all gonna be able to fit into the stadium? Hopefully, they're all gonna show up to come support the team for this uh, special game. It's a open cuts a fun game, especially when it's do or die. Someone's eliminated, but hopefully, you know, are y'all gonna be? Uh, are y'all three five two? Just from looking at your previous two games, your formation is is it an attacking style or does it drop back into a back five and y'all kind of not park the bus per se, but play more of a defensive? Uh, counter-attacking role. Can you ex- explain to us how the, what, what we expect from Tampa Bay? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say that the Rowdies uh, started out this season with four at the back, and I think that they were maybe trying to move towards that. But um, then with the continuing negative results, we switched back to what we were used to and what had given us so much, uh, so much, you know, progress and so many uh, almost trophies, I should say, in the past. And that was the three five two, like you said. So um, we do not necessarily sit back, and uh, I think that we are known 
around the league for being a more possession-based team. So to take it back to the last game that we played before the one that's on my screen tonight, we're still losing, by the way. But <laughs> um, yeah, the game that we played before was another one where we tried to build out of the back. And I think that honestly, in the first half of this past game against Charleston, it was, we did very well. I think that we were you know, playing some very good possession soccer. We were actually keeping the ball on the ground and the passes were crisp. We weren't giving them away in bad positions. And Charleston was definitely applying a lot of pressure. Um, we were, you know, we were under their press, but we were still working well enough that we were unable to avoid it and or able to avoid it, I should say. And uh, we were able to actually build up. So what we try to do, like I said, is build up on the ground. You're going to see a lot of us going up and down the wings we are definitely a cross-heavy team. Uh, we only ended up getting six crosses over the course of the whole game last game, and that was something that I noted for myself when we did our review of the game. Like, that is just not good enough for this Rowdy team. That's not what we're used to seeing. That's not what we need to see. We need to see a lot more crosses because that is something that we generally tend to thrive with. And um, one player that we're going to assuming, going to be assuming, is going to be there is Lewis Hilton. So Lewis Hilton is the central midfielder that sits in front of our back three he is kind of a bulldog in defense so he will you know he he's uh, a bulldog and an energizer bunny i've got too many animal references i guess but um he you know will run all day long and he will try and knock everybody off the ball but he's also very good when he receives the ball and we are in possession and he will build up either down the left or the right wing and then he will often look to switch the ball to the other wing and see if somebody is open there so our wing backs are definitely our most important players in terms of the attack and you know how we build it um connor antley has been frequently starting at right wing back and i don't know if he will be there on uh wednesday because he's actually playing as one of the deeper defenders tonight but he is a very important player for us he gets in a lot of crosses and then on the left wing we will have most likely ryan spaulding a player that we just brought in on loan from the revolution in mls so um you know these are players that we're going to look for to try and whip a ball in and somebody either get on the end of it or somebody get on the second ball that falls after, you know, somebody gets their head on it for the, uh, in the first place. And, um, the other, the other big things that I would say is right now we are trying to learn how to work with our new striker that replaced, uh, Sebastian Guanzotti that I was talking about earlier. So that's Cal Jennings. He is a guy who's kind of flipped in back and forth between MLS and USL. He was on LAFC's books, but he was mostly playing for Las Vegas on loan. So, that was where he kind of made uh, a name for himself in the USL Championship because he was scoring a lot of goals for a team that was really generally very poor. Uh, so far, he's come in here, though, and he hasn't really had the platform needed for him to score because he only has, I think, the one goal on the season. And um, Cal Jennings is a player who maybe isn't as well known for getting on the end of these crosses he obviously can and he has in certain situations but so far he hasn't quite put that part of his game together i'm hopeful that either that is something that he can work on or that it's something that he will get uh you know he will get to work around and he can create for other people because you know we that is like i said probably the most important part of our game but um, if it's not working with Cal Jennings, then we either need to find someone who is able to get on the end of the crosses, or we need to play a little bit more to his strengths. And I think that the other thing that we can do for Cal Jennings is probably get the ball to his feet a little bit more. So the players who are going to be responsible for that are likely Ariel Martinez and Jan Ekra, two of our uh, more central and attacking midfielders. Ariel Martinez and Jan Ekra are actually both elder statesmen in the USL Championship, but they are you know, whatever they lack in, you know, the, the speed that comes with just aging, I think that they definitely make up for an experience and the literal technical ability they have on the ball. They can beat players 1v1 and they frequently do. And uh, if you can turn somebody, get onto, you know, the other side and then you can kind of open up the field a little bit for yourself. I think that they're going to want to do that and maybe find Cal Jennings' feet and give him a, a backboard to pass the ball off of. And um, yeah, I, I think that if we can put it all together, obviously we're going to have something for us because we are a team that's capable of doing all of these things. We're a team that's capable of, um, you know, I would say competing. We did, we almost took Orlando city, you know, when we were away last year in 2022. Uh, and it was unfortunate because they are, you know, a local rival team, so to speak. And um 
we have a history with Orlando City. So I think that there was even more energy in the team that night. But yeah, unfortunately, we couldn't put it all together at the end. Orlando City brought on their you know, their top players and they kind of, you know, ended up shutting the game down overall because they just ended up with a higher amount of quality. And I think that that's something that the Rowdies will either have to try to play for you know, you go out there and you try to get a goal or two early so that you have a cushion if Houston wants to bring on their better players if they don't necessarily start them, which, you know, maybe Ben Olsen does. I'm not entirely sure what he's thinking at this point. Or, uh, yeah, we have to plan to be able to last throughout the whole game and the whole maybe extra time, whatever it goes to, and see if we can, you know, catch something a little bit later than that. But I would like to I would like to expect, of course, that this team is capable of it. It's just whether or not we can put all of these things together and make sure that the pieces do come out in a way that actually leads us to creating goal-scoring chances because that is where we are most lacking right now is just inability to actually get the chances that we need. And if you don't get those, of course, you can't score. <laughs> we, def we definitely know that feeling here, creating chances. Woo. That doesn't exist. So. Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So with that, that so we're, we're whether we, I right, we're not going to play a, a majority of our first team players. It doesn't sound like just from just from being banned, being banned. But there might be a couple first teamers that are starting. There's going to be some second teamers. Uh, our second team plays here in about one minute and. Uh, there's some players that are starting over there. So it's going to be kind of up in the air to what 1A or 1B or or 1C or 2B, what team we're going to bring gotcha. up and play against you. <laughs> but it, uh, the style that Ben Olsen has been teaching and showing these boys how to play, it's, uh, it's going to be he's, – he's playing more defensive, so he, he, but he presses at the same time. He didn't press up high, but he presses so – when creating chances that's going to be very hard if the if the boys are in unison in the middle of the box because uh, crosses we were able to get a lot of clearances we're not, not not giving up too many headers except for unless they're on corner kicks we're just horrible at set pieces for some reason but so if y'all can create something on the top of the box and there'll be a lot of opportunity to well, maybe get a handling in the boxes we we go they throw their bodies in the way uh, just last night Ethan Bartlow was taking line drives and just heading them out. I mean, freaking amazing. But so if y'all can create some chances, you, you're expecting it. Maybe is it going to be the two strikers up top receiving targets on the crosses or you think you'll be able to build through the midfield? Yeah, I would expect. So what I, what I have been seeing recently and what we started with tonight is that uh, Cal Jennings up top. And then uh, we have Felix Schroeder, a German striker who we signed from, Norway over the off season, uh, he came into preseason a little bit late because of, you know, just making sure that he has the proper work permit, all that kind of stuff. And now that he has it and he's been playing a couple of games, he's starting to show out well. And I think that he is very capable of getting on the end of crosses. He's already done so at least once. Um, where Cal Jennings, I, like I said, I think that he benefits a little bit more from having the ball played into his feet. So it's going to be a case where if we see those two start up top, and that's going to be my guess at this point, just because it's what we've seen for the last two, three, four games, maybe. Um, if that is what we do end up seeing, then we're probably going to definitely see some crosses because, again, that's the favorite uh, for the Rowdies over the past several years. We tend to play uh, a very cross-heavy style and a lot of pressing, although that has not been the case this year. We have not done as much pressing to try to create chances that way. So, um, we're going to try to most likely get in with the crosses or um, the possibility does exist that we will be there trying to make sure that we get in, you know, some build up through the midfield because Cal Jennings benefits from that. And we do have the players that are able, able and uh, capable of doing it on their own as well with Martinez and Ekra. I think that Lewis Hilton will play his usual metronome self and he can make the determination as to whether or not there's a player open on a wing. And, you know, maybe he'll find them in enough space that they can whip in a ball or he'll play it short to Ekra and Martinez, who can on their own kind of build it up a little bit, maybe find Cal Jennings and work it that way. But I, I would like to think that there are going to be options either way, so to speak. But most likely the creativity to put ourselves in chances through buildup has not quite been there. I am assuming our buildup is going to lead us mostly down the wings and based on at least our last couple games, mostly down the, the right wing. So 
Um, whoever your left back is, hopefully they're having an off day. <laughs> <laughs> That's that. Foster, I know you have a question. That's the curious thing. We just don't know what uh, what, what to expect with what lineup. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to watch the does tonight. We've got Dorsey, who's a first team, we're playing on the second team right now. And there's a, a, another – a winger that's starting up top. So it's, it's maybe they're getting ready for the game. So man, it's going to be, conf- but either way, like he, he sticks to a style that he's, that the, the team's going to play. So I expect uh, our midfielders to be swarming and trying to create uh, bad touches and just no, no, no secrecy between your other midfielders and just keep the press on right there. And then gotcha. whoever the center backs are going to be stepping in. If something comes through and trying to, to clear everything out, it's, 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 it's been working out very well uh, for the first team. You know, the, the Dynamo have not given up a goal at home to start the season in four games and roads a little bit of a different story. So there may be an advantage there for y'all, you know, real quick, one little question before Fox tried to ask, ask his, uh, you, your stadium, how, how many people do you hold and are, would you expect people to show up for this game? And, um, or is it just be just, a just a, another night down in Tampa Bay? Uh, you know, I can't say for certain what I would expect at this point. U S open cup games do tend overall to draw less, but I think that's just because it's in the middle of the week most of the time. So, you know, we had a game recently that was a league game, but it was a Wednesday and even I couldn't go. I would like to, you know, a- attend as many games as I could, but unfortunately I just had other obligations. I couldn't get myself out there through work and everything. And I think that's unfortunately how it goes for some people. But what I will say is this game will probably be one of the more full of any midweek games because the Rowdies have not had a chance to host an MLS team at their own stadium since 2013. That back then was a one nil win over Seattle Sounders, which, you know, it's it sounds crazy to say at the moment because right. <laughs> um, Seattle has been a good team since they joined the league. And I, I can't I you know, I can't imagine that 2013 was any different. But, um, yeah, we we beat them then and hosting an MLS team for, you know, you know, think of uh, FA Cup. Uh, if you think of any FA Cup results. You talk about like uh, Wrexham went on a, a little run this year and Grimsby Town went on a little run run this year. And, you know, these are teams that mostly people don't hear about. But the local fans, they are they are ecstatic to get these chances. And I think that that's going to be the same for lo- uh, lower division teams in any country and especially in America, because we don't actually even necessarily have a chance, you know, to get up. There's no promotion and relegation, of course. So. Uh, we as a fan base are going to have a little bit of a chip on our shoulder and the players certainly are going to. And I think that the, the fans are going to feel that, you know, they're going to feel that we want to get out there and kind of show that we are capable of competing, all of that kind of thing. So I expect that this will be one of the better attended of midweek games. And if we can pack it out, then it'll be, you know, probably 7,000 is roughly our max. Um, it's a little bit over that. I don't have the exact figure. But it is an old converted baseball stadium. That being said, it has been converted very well. It, you know, I, I wouldn't say that outside of the fact that there is uh, still the outline of a diamond, uh, you know, you wouldn't know it because they have built a stand out on what was the old outfield. And now the, the field itself sits in a perfect, you know, triangle for the actual soccer setup that they wanted to create and it's a beautiful little stadium i don't know how many people from houston are heading out there if any but um yeah it overlooks the water you can see the bay from there i i think that it's i think that it's a really cool place and even though it's across the bridge for me who lives in tampa i'm perfectly happy every time i go to st pete because it's just an, just such a nice area oh yeah nice. and that was one of the main things i wanted to say because if i had the chance to go to go on a road trip for like a road game it would definitely be uh, St. Petersburg, Tampa Bay, because like it's, it's just um, it's one of those trips that it doesn't happen every season, you know. And exactly, it just goes back exactly. to say like the last time an MLS team played there was like literally ten years ago. So it, it's just it's just pretty good. And, and th- that was like the main question I had as well. But at the same time, the thing I wanted to say though was that like as long as Tampa Bay is able to like find those spaces in the flanks, I feel like there's a good chance you guys can create some damage because like. Our main weakness was just that uh, the fact that uh, the teams, especially at Miami yesterday, like they found the spaces and they had like the, a ton of chances uh, going back and forth, but uh, they, they eventually didn't uh, convert uh, for some for some reason, and that's just how the sport is, unfortunately, for them. So, <laughs> um, no, yeah, I feel like if Tampa Bay 
we can follow that same trend unless Ben Olsen adjusts around that. I feel like they can create some damage for sure. Well, I'm hopeful. Um, you know, it, it's definitely going to be tough for us to do, but so far we have gotten better. We have made every game, you know, a little better than the last one, even if our results weren't always showing it because our first Open Cup game was against an amateur team. That was our first win of the season roughly two weeks ago now. Then we beat uh, Miami in our own division. That was a league game. So that was our first league win of the season. So, you know, feel like we're kind of picking up momentum. Then we go up against Charleston. We'd already played Charleston. They beat us 3-0, and uh, they were up by two within the first 10 minutes. So, you know, when we get through 10 minutes against Charleston and we haven't given up a goal, it's like, okay, this is some progress, right? But uh, then we scored against them. We're going into the very end of stoppage time, and they had leveled it. It's 1-1. With almost the last kick of the kick of the game, uh, Charleston takes one of our own chances and comes right back down our throat and they score. And, you know, they end up taking three points just because of a bad play that was almost the last play of the game. So it's not a good result, obviously, but I think it is still necessary that we have to say this is progress. We were not starting off well enough and we held Charleston. So, you know, you build up, and that was the game, like I said, I saw the most crisp passing that we'd done so far, the best build up out of the back, which is what we're known for. We still didn't do much of the pressing so far, and I don't know if that's because our coaching staff has determined this isn't the the roster for that. But, you know, it's uh, if that's something that we're going to stop trying to uh, impose on ourselves on the game through pressing, then... I hope that they're working a lot more on building ourselves up on the other sides of the game. And that is where we're going to have another big test, obviously, this this Wednesday. So, yeah, um, uh, it's going to be exciting. So what I learned from this this episode is y'all are y'all are sleeping giant, per se. You're just you can be a dangerous team if if things come together. And uh, thankfully, from what we've seen from our boys this season so far, they're, they're, they're learning the system and they're playing smart with the system. So interchanging some of those pieces, I do expect a couple first teamers to play who don't start. They sit the bench. So they'll most likely play this game, especially with the team getting the, the buy that we, I'm not sure how we feel about it still. I mean, <laughs> it, some people already had their tickets and their planes bought and all that good stuff. And I guess, you know, uh, whatever, whatever happened there, but they were mad. They didn't. They wanted to go. Now we get to play them back to back in the season, four days apart. So that'll be. Oh wow! That, yeah, that'd be interesting. We'll call that a Champions League home and away event. <laughs> but no. But uh, you know, Foxtrot, you have any any closing questions for James? No, oh, that's it for me. Honestly, I, I'm just looking forward to this game. I love the Open Cup. Uh, even if if my team loses, I, I love watching it, especially the lower the lower division teams when they make it a threat far run. Last year, my favorite team was Union Omaha. I'm also rooting for Union Omaha this year. I think everyone is, and 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 I yeah, I just love the competition overall. So I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, um, personally, I was I was also rooting on uh, Union Omaha. I know Sacramento obviously made it to the final, and I really wanted them to win because they ended up playing uh, our old rivals, Orlando City. Unfortunately, right. it didn't work out that way. Fair yeah. enough, but. Um, the other team that I'm keeping an eye on this round is the amateur team. Uh, I think it's Tulsa Athletic or something like oh, that yeah. because yeah, yeah. FC Tulsa plays in our league and they lost to this amateur team. So uh, that is that is the other game that I'm keeping an eye out on. I think that they're playing uh, Sporting Kansas City. Yes. But uh, yeah. yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. Well, James, we want to thank you for hopping in tonight and, and alerting us to who the Tampa Bay Rowdies are and what we're kind of expecting. So, like I said, uh, I took my take from this is Tampa Bay could be a dangerous team and, you know, Houston's going to have to come in and and, and play on all cylinders uh, no matter what roster they, they bring in play with that game. So it should be an interesting game. I think it's uh, 6.30 Eastern or 7.30 Eastern time, 6.30 Central time. Yeah. on wednesday yeah and so uh well, i'll definitely be watching from afar rooting from afar and uh i i expect a good game and i wish y'all the best this game but uh james any final takes or anything you would like to say any shout outs uh let us know about your your company again and then we'll just uh, we'll head out from here 
yeah, uh, if you can, please follow RBLR Sports. Obviously, we do appreciate that. And, you know, this year we've been doing uh, preview articles for every game that we can. And along with that, we've been reaching out to, um, you know, podcasts for the other teams that we play. And we've been getting their little preview blurbs. And uh, this one, we actually did multiple uh, preview podcasts for the game against Houston. So, you know, I, I'm just I'm just so uh, over the moon that we have had the chance to do this for multiple different podcasts because that's, you know, it's it's the little way that we can all build the American soccer landscape, so to speak. And, uh, you know, England has their, their soccer landscape, Italy, Germany, they all have theirs or whatever. And we're starting a little late, but with all the people that we've got involved at this point, it's going to get there. I know that, you know, soccer will make it in this country, so to speak, but um, I appreciate that you guys are doing the same thing that I'm trying to do and just, you know, build it up. And I, I, I love that we are all kind of on the same page there. So thank you for having me. And like I said, please follow RBLR Sports if you can, because we are trying to do the same thing. Well said. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. So her, like I like to tell Herman, he likes to say forever orange. You like to say your favorite two words, Foxtrot? It's <laughs> Stay noodle, stay noodle, yeah. <laughs> stay noodle. And, then, and then we give the H's up, guys. Thanks for listening to Instant Ramen this week. We talked with James from, from RBLR, the Rowdies, and we expect a good game. So y'all check it out, guys. Appreciate it. H's up.